Good afternoon, everyone. Um, this is Simon Volta, Sales Director with V Technologies, and I appreciate everyone taking uh, some time this afternoon to join me on a, a follow-up from our uh, QB Connect show in San Jose. Um, I'm very excited to kind of present to you our Starship application. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen it yet um, and how it integrates with QuickBooks, um, we can go through a couple different workflows this afternoon. Uh, that I have set up. Um, and again, I'll leave it open to questions at the end um, and I'll be able to address those. So I'm going to try to keep this to about 20 minutes today at most. Um, so again, if you do have questions, uh, put the question down by your name um, and we'll get to those again at the end of the presentation here. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. Um, so again, a little bit about um, V Technologies. Um, so we have about 30 years experience um, with uh, the shipping software. Um, so Starship is a multi-carrier, multi-mode shipping application that integrates with QuickBooks Enterprise and QuickBooks Online. Uh, it also provides the um, functionality of uh, incorporating all the different shipping carriers that a client may use um, into one application. Uh, we have different workflows around e-commerce marketplaces and shopping carts along with EDI solutions as well. Um, so if a client is working uh, with any of those other applications, we can accommodate those requests if needed. Um, also, uh, V Technologies um, is uh, proud to announce we're also a QuickBooks Solutions provider. Um, so again, a client may come to us um, direct or through another partner, um, but again, if they were to purchase either QuickBooks Online or Enterprise through us, um, either as a new license or as a renewal, um, they have the ability um, of getting a discount on the Starship program itself. Um, and in de depending on the plan they choose, um, there could be up to 75% off on the Starship application. <clears throat> so a couple of the main features that Starship offers. So again, as I mentioned, we have the ability of showing all of the carriers as options on one application. So both LTL for pallet shipping and parcel uh, for your standard UPS, FedEx, post office. Uh, we're ability, we have the ability to leverage all your line items to simplify your documents, to automate your email notifications, uh, and much more. Um, and then we can also auto-pack your orders as well, so we can make Starship as smart as we'd like it to be, um, where we know that, hey, we have 10 items of one quantity or one SKU, uh, and we need to pack those into two boxes, for an example. Um, and Starship knows to create two boxes for you automatically. So again, we can incorporate that into the workflow if needed. Um, we have the ability to update your e-commerce platform simultaneously. So we have about 14 different shopping carts, which you'll see momentarily. Um, so you do have the capability of updating that along with your QuickBooks uh, enterprise or online application as well. Um, along with the ability to rate shop, um, we also provide all of our Starship users with the discounted um, USPS rates. Um, they'll benefit from the lowest rates the post office provides called commercial plus pricing. Um, this gives them the capability of potentially saving some money uh, over a FedEx or a UPS shipment, um, and mostly on the accessorial fees, so like a residential charge or a delivery charge, or even maybe a fuel surcharge they might be experiencing. Those they can basically save by migrating some of that business to post office. Um, and I'll talk more about that in a few minutes as well. Uh, and then lastly, here we have the ability of printing all of your package, pallet labels, packing lists, um, et cetera, all together, kind of keep those documents at the end um, so there's no crisscrossing of documents from the front office to the warehouse. This is just a list of carriers that we support. We have about 25 different direct carrier integrations uh, along with a couple 3PL integrations that we support today. Um, so again, we have the ability here to not only rate quote uh, in one application, but we can also tender um, to some of these LTL carriers as well electronically um, to schedule pickups uh, versus calling them on a daily basis. So again, uh, if clients are interested here as far as um, you know, taking advantage of any of these carriers uh, through our application, um, we just sell it per module um, is how it would be sold, and we would just need to know that ahead of time to quote that out appropriately. And lastly, here with all of our different shopping carts that we support, um, so we went out and basically integrated with most of the national ones or well-recognized ones as your Shopify's, Magento's, Amazon's, Big Commerce, just to name a few here. Um, so again, if you're using any of these applications, 
uh, we can either integrate directly to these carts or we can um, could connect through QuickBooks uh, to these carts and we write back to the cart at the end. Um, so again, we can talk more about that um, if you have that workflow that is needed um, for your um, websites. And lastly, um, I spoke about post office earlier, but we partner up with a uh, company called Visible Supply Chain, who is our provider for all of our post office rates that you would see in the Starship application. Uh, and here, basically, what they've done since the beginning of this year has um, provided a no cost, no obligation quote or transportation analysis, I should say, um, of looking at a FedEx or UPS billing file. Um, to help analyze and figure out what their current spend is for a client um, versus what their future spend could look like by incorporating uh, like priority mail, for example, into the equation um, and seeing how much of that business they can incorporate. This one example we did for a customer um, helped them save over $400,000 a year uh, by just adding post office to their uh, fulfillment um, model. So again, it's basically a, a well-designed analysis, kind of very informative, but again, the nice thing about it is it leaves the client basically with no obligation, so they don't have to make any changes, or they can make 100% of change or whatever they decide to do at the end of the day. Okay, so let me switch over to my demo environment here. Um, so in Starship itself, um, let's make this full screen. So in Starship itself, uh, so when a client uh, were to come into our application, uh, they would be using our web browser um, to utilize um, the application. Uh, it is still an on-premise solution. Uh, our Starship Cloud, as some of you may have heard um, at our booth at QuickBooks Connect, um, is on the horizon. It will be the same user interface that the um, user would experience. Um, but today, we still set up on a server, and there'll be client workstations set up throughout the warehouse. Um, so they'll log in and they'll be able to see this home screen here of all of their orders that are waiting to be shipped. Uh, the way I know they're waiting to be shipped is because we've set a filter um, to look at only orders that have not been processed um, yet. And that are these four orders that you see in front of you. Um, we have the ability if a client's um, sales order, sales invoice, or sales receipt are the three document types that we can use. If any one of those are barcoded, we can scan that in using a wedge type scanner to the field that my cursor is in uh, currently and hit enter and it would load the information. If not, we can simply hit our little truck icon off to the right and basically see all the information from the QuickBooks sales order in this example be populated into our application. <clears throat> so in real time, we get all the information from basically the ship via carrier. So this one would coming in UPS ground. Um, it automatically defaulted to my account as a prepaid shipment. However, we do have a lot of clients who are uh, shipping third party for various carriers. So we can basically set a third party ID inside of Starship and map a appropriate billing account number from QuickBooks. Um, so that way, anytime we see, for instance, a Kathy Panic um, as a recipient, we know that it's automatically gonna trigger a third party UPS account number um, that we've already had mapped. Um, the user does have the ability of coming into any one of these widgets and modifying it manually. So you can come in here and enter third party and then enter a billing account manually if you choose. We're trying to simplify the amount of clicks that you would need to make. Uh, also, Starship is basically providing an address validation behind the scenes. A green checkbox will represent everything is checked out to be good. We validated the street address, zip code, along with a residential versus commercial check to avoid those address correction fees a client may see on their UPS or FedEx invoicing today. Um, the other thing that Starship is going to do for you is bring in all the line items I mentioned earlier in my presentation. So here you'll see that I have everything defaulted into one box. So the two items from the sales order have come in, my puck and my Lego set, um, into my default package. Starship also provides you with a full packaging database along with an inventory database. Uh, you have the ability of loading all of your packaging dimensions and weights ahead of time, either in bulk or one by one. Uh, and the same thing with your inventory database as well. We can take that in bulk or enter them as one by one and save those so we have them for future reference. Um, you can also manually enter dimensions um, here as well if you prefer, and you also have the ability of um, integrating with a package scale. Um, pallet scales are not available um, at this time with Starship, uh, but a package scale will be uh, allowed for you to put a package on the scale and have it read the weight. Um, Starship also supports um, dimensional weight. 
Um, so here you can see I have my actual weight at 10 pounds, but Starship take, took in consideration the dimensions, and this is actually being rated at 13 pounds currently. That's what the rate quote down below is going to reflect. Um, so down below you have basically all of your published charges coming in for parcel, your contracted rate with UPS, and then the applied rate. The applied rate is what we're going to put back in the QuickBooks in this example. Um, it is also taking advantage of any freight rules uh, that you've established. A freight rule is basically a percentage or a flat fee um, that you want to mark up on top of your negotiated rate um, to, you know, by maybe by customer name, uh, maybe by value, maybe by the weight of the goods. Um, there's various amounts of uh, variables that you could use to determine what that rate is going to be. Um, but again, Starship can calculate that for you to put the amount correctly back into your QuickBooks application. Um, I should also mention the Q, uh, QuickBooks Online and QuickBooks Enterprise integration is ide ideally the same integration, the workflow-wise anyway. Um, the only difference when I get to the write-back that you're going to see um, will be basically the write-back of tracking numbers on a line item in QuickBooks Enterprise versus being put into a header field um, in QuickBooks Online. So I just want to make that clear as well. Um, also down below, you'll have the ability to rate shop, as I mentioned earlier, to see all of the various carriers on your license. Um, so this is nice to avoid that need to go from FedEx to UPS to post office to maybe an LTL provider. Um, everything is going to be done here in one screen. So if they were to click shop all, this is going to go out, connect up to each API for the carrier and pull back your negotiated rates. We also have the ability of pulling in uh, or utilizing, I should say, a business rule um, that when we import the um, order into Starship, we can have the rate shop already have done for me and also make it one step further and pick the least expensive option uh, rather than me waiting to the end to basically go out and pick the um, option I want to use. So here you can see I have all of my carriers. I have my post office, my FedEx rates, my UPS rates. I have this sorted right now by lowest to highest from a rate perspective. Uh, you can store on any one of these columns. So if I wanted to pull all my post office or maybe I want to put all my UPS rates together, I can simply click here and would um, organize those accordingly for me to see how my rates compare to the other competitors. Uh, but also what we return besides rates, uh, we return business day transit time. Um, so here you can see uh, it's coming in UPS one day, uh, but priority mail is also going to be one day, for instance, in this example. Um, it's going to cost me uh, $10.67 versus going to be uh, 1671. So this is sort of a no-brainer for me to choose um, the post office as an exa example. So if I wanted to, uh, versus me having to re-import this order all over again, I can simply click here. And now what you'll notice is that it switched it automatically to my Easy Post account, which is the electronic postage provider that we utilize uh, on the back end to fund your postage um, through Starship. Uh, so again, here you basically see it change it to my Easy Post account. And now I'm ready to ship my priority mail label, um, and then I can write that back into QuickBooks. So when I'm ready to process this order in QuickBooks, I can simply hit Ship and Process, or F3, and now I'll basically get my label along with my packing list, and then in real time, I'll have the write back into QuickBooks as well. So, um, so as this processes, um, you'll see here a PDF image of what that label will look like. So here you can see we call this our smart label. Uh, so this is a four by six die cut, so you can peel that off, stick it on the box. The other half becomes your packing list if you want it to be. Um, you can turn this feature off. Um, you can also print these both to a thermal printer if you choose, or one to a thermal, one to a laser. The other advantage you have here is you can customize this packing list. Um, maybe your company logo, uh, maybe you want to remove fields, add fields in this packing list, um, but we give you a full template designer to design this as you feel is appropriate. Um, so again, that you have uh, complete control on. So as I come back into QuickBooks and I basically show you um, that order. So, um, so as I pull up that order here, 8864, here you'll see that even though I have it as UPS up in the uh, uh, header field in the ship via, um, I put it back in the line item as priority mail it was shipped as along with the appropriate tracking number and again, along with the appropriate freight charges in real time for you, along with the shift on date as well. The other thing I wrote back is this process field. It's a new feature we recently added to our latest version um, where we created a custom field called ship status, and we have the ability to write back process to this now. Um, so now when you filter, 
um, back in Starship, um, you will notice now, if I go back in here, that 8864 was removed, and now I have my other orders to ready to be shipped and processed uh, to move forward. So to take this one step further, um, since we have a few minutes here to go, I'm just gonna process an LTL shipment for those of you are shipping LTL shipments today, just to kind of give you a quick look at what that looks like and the differences there. Um, so here, basically, you have the same process. You bring in the order. Um, everything else is uh, the same. So this happens to be coming in UPS freight uh, by a value translation I did with UPS, um, bringing in the appropriate freight account number along with my appropriate charges. Um, the one difference you'll see here, instead of having a box in the packaging view, I now have a pallet. And my pallet, again, can be, um, I can save all my different pallet dimensions in here along with my box weights as well. Um, and then you'll also notice here um, that I have basically created a packaging scenario or where we basically auto pack. Um, because I have two pool covers in this example, I know that you know, I can only fit one pool cover in a box. So that's why it's automatically created two boxes for me here. So I have a total of three cartons that are gonna go onto this pallet um, very easily. Um, if I wanted to here, I can also add a carton to move things around or maybe wanna add a pallet and I can drag and drop items onto a pallet or the boxes in, in total I can drop on a pallet as well. Um, and then again, down below, you'll notice that we don't return any published charges for LTL uh, because we know the discounts are extremely high uh, and nobody's paying say $4,000 for an LTL shipment. Um, so we're only gonna return a contracted rate of what you're paying that carrier. And again, the applied rate, if you have that freight rule established like I have here with 30% markup, um, and then I can put that back in the QuickBooks as well. And then same thing here, um, you can rate shop this if you wanted to, to find your least available option. Um, and then all the same information is returned uh, back into QuickBooks. So once I ship and process this, um, I now have a bill of lading that's gonna um, uh, print for me for UPS freight. Um, so I have basically one option here of utilizing um, their own bill leading with UPS freight. So I'll have all the commodity or the constant E information, who I'm shipping from, also basically all the commodities, how many boxes of those commodities I have, along with the appropriate NMFC codes, class, weight, all of that stuff is on the VOL that you would give off to your driver. Um, and then you can also, if you didn't want to use their own, you can use our version, same information, UPS freight up top. And then we also are returning a pro number on both documents as well electronically. Um, so that's another advantage you have by using Starship versus having a pro book um, to basically peel and stick stickers on a pallet. Um, and then all the same information is there for you as well. And then you also have uh, the ability of printing a shipment packing list if you prefer to have that as well. And again, same thing back in QuickBooks. If I just move over to my order 8865, you'll notice we put the pro number for LTL in here along with the appropriate carrier and again, those freight charges that have been listed. So that really concludes the overall high level sort of demo that I wanted to show this afternoon. 